This is a Graceless Audio presentation from Southern California professional Christian counselor Bill Ferris. You can learn more about Bill and his counseling, speaking, and writing ministry at BillFerris.com or by visiting him on Facebook at Bill Ferris MPC. And now here's today's Graceless Audio message. Hi, this is Bill Ferris with another Graceless Audio podcast. Excited to share with you uh, on this important topic of divorce, divorce recovery, divorce care. And I have with me a special guest. Cherie Francis Bogeman is with me today. I'm so excited to have her share part of her story, not only as a person who has walked some of these paths as a single woman, a single mother, uh, divorced uh, and, and remarried, but also as a believer, a lover of Jesus, uh, and a uh, professional woman uh, with a very uh, competent and capable uh, life of uh, professional um, uh, development in her career, and also a team member and co-leader of a wonderful divorce recovery program in which I volunteer mm-hmm. twice a year. Uh, it's called, what is it called? <laughs> Free to Love Again Divorce Recovery Workshop. And uh, this Free to Love Again Divorce Recovery Workshop is something that's offered here in Southern California two times a year, yes. three days long each time. Well, it's two evenings and a full day. Two so evenings and a full mm-hmm. day. So yeah, in, in, in that sense, it's not exactly three days, is it? Yeah. So, um, and there is also, we didn't mention this in the other uh, presentation, but there is also uh, opportunity for children in the in this in this uh, we have had opportunity for children in the past and we're waiting to see if that need will develop okay. again so okay. it's on a case by case, case by basis case. we right. do have a curriculum and a team okay uh, but as the demand changes then okay. we will reinstall that got it okay and so uh you find out about this by going to uh, on online, go on to free to love again, org. free to love again, org. That of course stands for divorce recovery workshop. Uh, and uh, if you can Google it or you can simply go to uh, divor- um, free to love again, org to find out the dates. The next one coming up for us is November early in the month. Mm-hmm. And then it'll be a spring uh, version as well. And every year there are these two opportunities, spring and fall, uh, so please, please take note of that. And not only for yourself, but for anyone you know who is going through or has gone through divorce, that would be an important uh, opportunity for them if they're here in Southern California. So with that, let's talk about divorce recovery. Yes. What does that term even mean? Well, actually, so divorce is devastating. And uh, for people that haven't been through it, it's in people, it's much more devastating than one could imagine. Uh, You look at your own uh, devastation, but then when you look at the children as well and the impact that it's had on them. So, you know, after you've gone through an event like that, how do you do the best you can to pull things together and, and forge a better future? You, you described a divorce recovery uh, workshop, uh, free to love again, DRW, Dot org. You've described this program that you guys offer and that I participate in myself, privileged to do so, uh, as boot camp. Yes. Uh, what do you mean by by that? What is it? What is it that a person going through a divorce recovery workshop like yours might might encounter? Well, there's there's different ways that people can go through divorce recovery. There's one on one counseling. There's um, there's a program called Divorce Care that several of the churches have that, and it's a videotape and a small group discussion, and you walk you work through uh, different topics of divorce. Ours is um, very more intense, and we're it is a boot camp. You're gonna go um, and quickly diagnose where you're at in the recovery process, and you're going to go deep for those that are ready to roll their sleeves up and um, can't say it's not going to be painful, but when you get to the end of it, um, we've seen numerous people, their countenances changed dramatically. And um, that's the intention of the weekend is to, to boost the recover the healing process. It's- now, you've done one or two of these in the last no, you've done. <laughs> we think we we counted up in the way over here about twenty probably or right. more yes. of these three day, well, two 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 evening and one full day 
uh, sessions, uh, workshops. Um, so this is not something that you are sort of putting together um, on the fly. You, you're in your, you and your team have real experience. Why can't people just get over it and just mm-hmm. move on and just, why do they need a boot camp or a divorce care or private counseling or community? You know, wh- wh- you know, I mean, stuff happens. I mean, why can't people just get it together and move on? What's, what's the problem? Uh, why would they need this kind of, uh, uh, of intervention? Well, I pulled up this reference from uh, Chip Ingram, and uh, he has a book. Uh, let me see if I can get the title. Love, Sex, and Lasting Relationships. And in his book, he talks about Hollywood's formula for relationships. And that is, one, you find the right person. Two, you fall in love. Three, you fix your hopes and dreams on that person for your future fulfillment. Step number four, if failure occurs, repeat steps one, two, and three. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well what's wrong with that Cherie? <laughs> well <laughs> i mean it works so good in hollywood <laughs> uh, at such expense too um so god's prescription for relationship is one become the right person mm. two walk in love three fix your your hope on god and to please him through this relationship for if failure occurs, then repeat steps one, two, and three. Wow. And uh, one of the things we talk about in the divorce recovery is what is marriage? Marriage isn't, God didn't give us marriage for happiness, although there are happy marriages and they're very fulfilling. And you having one of them, Bill. Uh, 40 years now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and very, very fulfilled in yes. your marriage. Yes. Um, but there's also an author, Gary Thomas, that talks about sacred marriage. Mm. And what if God actually designed marriage to make it make us holy more than to make us happy? Wow. And so when we recognize that, you know, our marriage, going into our marriage wasn't necessarily make us happy, uh, why did we choose the person we chose? And how did we get into this situation? Because nobody uh, goes into marriage um, thinking that it'll end in divorce. Yes. Now, there's two mistakes. We talked about this a few minutes ago between the two of us before this this podcast. And wh- one of the mistakes that we note that people tend to make is they try to rush through. Mm-hmm. It is painful. It is yes. disorienting. There are a lot of things that that can happen. But there's another phenomenon we discussed that happens in some cases in divorce. and uh, And that is that after being under a cloud of struggle and strain, possibly abuse or what have you, to come to that point of relief mm-hmm. and release kind of makes you feel alive again. Right. And you might actually kind of light up in a way you haven't lit up in a long time and you might sparkle a bit. Yep. And that can be very attractive to people. And suddenly you're getting attention and suddenly you're getting interest and you're going, oh gosh, you know, maybe I'm, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm desirable. Maybe, uh, you know, so how does that, that phenomenon set people up? You know, I mean, we can talk about the other response mm-hmm. to divorce which is to be crushed and 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 and, and exhausted and 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 not sparkly at all right. and that's a that's a different phenomenon but in this issue of people that come through it and they're they're kind of like okay ready to go i mean i feel mm-hmm. alive again let you know where do i get started on my next relationship what do you have to say to that well there are two different camps and usually the camp that ends up going through the divorce recovery workshop are the people that were kind of stunned by it. Mm -hmm. Uh, They were not expecting it. Uh, We had one woman that had just been served papers and was floored and showed up at the divorce recovery workshop uh, the very next day. Um, There are people that their spouse may have left for an affair and they're picking up the pieces. But there are situations where there was struggle and that was my marriage. I... um, Mm -hmm. We worked hard. I wanted to make this marriage work. I wanted my kids to be raised in a um, in a whole household. I had gone through divorce and I did not want my kids to have that experience. And I felt like I had done everything I possibly could do. We had gone to counseling. 
uh, I thought by the end, when we got to that point where I said, we're going to have to separate again, my husband said, we're not going to separate. I want a divorce. And um, there was a little bit of relief on mm, my part. After all that struggle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I felt like, wow, we've gone through so much counseling that I feel like I understand what's going on. I feel like what, you know, what happened in the marriage and I'm good to go. I'm in a healthy spot. And um, I had lost weight <laughs> and uh, was was thin and looking pretty good. I was had the relief of... Um, not struggling in the marriage anymore and life was starting to come back into me and uh, my zest for living. Mm. And uh, I was in, uh, there's a book that we will reference often. It's called Growing Through Divorce and it's Jim by Jim Smoke. And it's a very practical guide of um, walking, walking through divorce. There's a chapter in this book that is, I think, 47 going on 17. And people that have been, um, married for years and years and years and haven't been in the dating scene, it can be um, actually a little traumatic. I I was going to places, I was going to fast food places or even Home Depot just to do a little fix it and walking out to my car and this guy comes chasing after me. Oh, you know, I just would like to have your phone number. And I, th- this was <laughs> very not prepared, for this. not prepared. And, you know, I didn't want to be mean to people, but, <laughs> you know, it's like, how do we even just navigate the social circumstances of that much less? So on one hand, you might be attracting people with your vital- newfound vitality and sort of feel Feeling your oats again, as it were. And on the other hand, there may be actual predators out there, especially for women uh, that are looking for vulnerable people having come through a divorce or something like that, who they can kind of spot and spy and Mm -hmm. see that, you know, see that they have an opportunity to take advantage. Yes, there there is a lot of um, shame in walking through divorce. There's actually a secular book called Crazy Time. And um it's a sad book to read because you you look at kind of our knee jerk reaction of of being um, rejected by our spouse mm-hmm. and then being accepted by somebody else. And it's um, so anyway, that that was a tough, tough read to to look at how people go through this. Mm-hmm. So there's a way to go through it well. And there's a way to and meaning doing the work, rolling your sleeves up so that you're in a healthy spot to make good, healthy choices. Mm-hmm. But I kick the night off of um, the divorce recovery workshop because my story is pretty embarrassing. Actually, it was um, there was a lot of shame attached to it, but I did not feel attractive in my marriage. And when I started getting this attention uh, and then I had 100 percent and everybody goes through it differently, Mm -hmm, different circumstances. Um, Some have shared custody and you have the issues of kids going from one house to the other and Mm -hmm. rules at one house, rules at the other, one being Disneyland parent, one being the enforcer. There's that stickiness. But I was 100 percent custody. So I actually never got a break. And uh, just that time to regroup. And there was one Friday night I was exhausted and um, didn't have a lot of money. And I thought, oh, let's go to the community um, clubhouse and have free dinner. It was uh, the holiday dinner and uh, my kids will be entertained and I'll just be able to have a breather. Mm -hmm. Well, by the end of that night, my kids weren't ready to leave. And this guy, young Hawaiian dude up in the bar, we caught that's my testimony, the young Hawaiian dude. (laughs) um, I'm up there drinking a Corona Mm -hmm. and um, he goes, wow, you're really thirsty. And apparently I was drinking it pretty quickly. And he goes, why don't you uh, go drop the kids off and come on back here? And I said, you don't understand. I go, I've got you know, things I need to do. I still have to do the shopping for the week. I have to do this. And then I um, have the kids and it's going into the holiday season. I have the kids with me and I'm doing um, like martial arts with the kids. Can I have this? Can I have that? Can I have this? Mm. I was just spent. Mm. Yeah. And then all of a sudden that idea of going, dropping the kids off and being back at the bar and just r- having some downtime. Was having pretty, adult time. Having adult time. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah was very um, inviting to me. Yeah. And I returned and uh, he um, later, so that began the relationship where I jumped into this and um, I woke up several months later realizing I had created the same situation that my dad had done to me, that yeah. he had gotten involved in an affair 
And that relationship was more important to him yeah. than the well-being of his kids. Yeah. Um, in this situation, I was um, a new businesswoman. I was um, making money, and he he was losing money, and he was just about to crack the next deal, and I was giving money to support that. And uh, by the time I woke up, and this is when I did hit rock bottom at that point, mm. and that's when I went to my youth pastor and mm. got connected with you, Bill. But I was uh, an additional $20,000 in debt that I had given to this man. Uh, I had spent a lot of time, um, thank God it was no more than a year, uh, with him rather than being there for my kids. I did wait till they would get to bed at night, but emotionally I wasn't there for my kids. Yeah. And um, I woke up and realized I had done the exact same thing my father had done to me. There are those moments of truth in life, aren't there? Yeah. When we we recognize that the path that we have chosen, whether we knew we were choosing it or not, have led us into places that we now regret and understand the implications. The Bible says there is a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And so, yeah, it's possible to 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 make mistakes. How do you come back from those mistakes? How do you recover? That's some of the things that you work on with people. Right. And this other phenomenon, though, of people who come out of divorce flattened, Mm -hmm. lifeless, limp, you know, devastated. Mm -hmm. What do you have to say to those folks? Um, I think the biggest message that we communicate is that of hope, that the pain that you're in right now is not going to be there forever. You do the work, and um, it's not it's not a quick recovery. But um, once you start to do the work, you you will be in a better place. And the statistics are very positive for people that if you want to get married again after divorce, um, the the statistics are very high that you will will be married again. Sometimes it feels like that, like I'll never, I'll never, I've my I'm too old now, or whatever the lies are that we tell ourselves. Uh, but statistics show that a, a second marriage is, um, if you want it, it's highly probable. Mm. Now, it being a healthy marriage, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> those statistics are... <laughs> that's why we want to do good divorce recovery, yes. do good after-divorce care, and good personal work with uh, developing our spiritual foundations, developing life-giving relationships, developing a sense of community with other believers, with other people who care for the things that we care about, uh, doing uh, all of the things that help us understand. You said in our last episode that one of the ways that this whole series of experiences changed you is it caused you to slow down Mm -hmm. and to be more mindful, more reflective, more self-understanding, closer to the Lord, uh, to bring different kind of people around you in your life and your kids' lives. Mm -hmm. So that whole process of slowing down was very important to you. But what about those that are very, they're very slowed down. Mm -hmm. They're barely crawling. You're saying, you're saying your message to them is there is hope. Yes. Yes, there is hope. And, and actually, so the way the workshop is designed, the first night is really kind of an awareness of where you're at. And I kick off with my testimony so that the shame gets dropped. Yeah. Um, That's, we call that uh, divorce recovery 102 when you actually share your testimony. And when you speak it out loud, the, you know, God does something special with that. And it's almost like you leave that cloak of shame right there on the stage. Wow. And uh, no longer is that embarrassing to me. I'm, I'm a human being and that's the route that I took. And if I, my story can pr- help people prevent going down that road, then I'm glad to share it. You know, I think that this really brings up a, an important point, which is one of the most powerful things that happens to us in a healing process is our ability to be reconciled Mm -hmm. to our pain, our fears, our mistakes, our losses, our hurts. So often people think of healing as just getting away from the pain, just, you know, just getting past it as if it's, as if life is this little timeline with little dots on it and we can just leave the past. You know, that was three dots ago, you know? Right. No, it's not like that. Life is not a straight line like that. But um, it's important, I think, to realize that uh, there is a way to become reconciled to our, our, our deep. It, I love the, the, the phrase. It's, it's, it's one of my mottos that I adopted from my graduate school, my Christian uh, 
counseling training school attributed to St. Augustine who said, in my deepest wound, I saw your glory Mm. and it dazzled me. Mm. In my deepest wound, I saw your glory and it dazzled me. And one of my counselees was telling me once about how she had come through a terrific process of recovery extensive process of recovery from childhood sexual abuse uh, mm-hmm. that went on into her early teens. And, and now she's a mother of three. She's in her, she's approaching 40 years old. She's got a real life. She loves the Lord. Her family serves the Lord um, and all of that. And, and, and yet she, she's been reaching out to younger women who have been through this, you know, because she has a place of understanding to come, to come from to them. Mm-hmm. And one time I said to her, I said, how did you survive that? How did you, how did you, what did you do with all of that that you went through? And she said, oh, it's just part of the recipe. Mm-hmm. I said, what do you mean? She goes, it's just part of what God used in my life to make me who I am. Mm-hmm. And now I can speak from a place that I know that others can't speak from mm-hmm. to reach people and to help people. Mm-hmm. And so I, I, I love that phrase, just part of the recipe. Mm-hmm. It's part of the the thing that makes us who we are our our gifts our blessings mm-hmm. uh that and our and our struggles our pains our failures our our shame all of that is part of the recipe but it's all available to god isn't it if we turn right. it over to him right that um brings up a couple thoughts for me there was a point where somebody talked to me you know i was going through this this ministry was kind of born out of that and i went through the first workshop as a leader but very much as a student and somebody said you know you have so much grace for other people in your life why don't you have that same grace for yourself whoa whoa and yeah, yeah. when i could start to look at myself as how would I befriend myself? How yeah. would I care for myself? Wow. Um, what would I do? And then um, that that was, you know, just just that little thought of, you know, giving myself, why don't you take it easy today? Why don't you yeah. have a bubble bath? Why don't yeah. you, <laughs> yeah. you know, so, yeah. so shifting that. Um, some people, they deal with the pain by jumping into other relationships. Yeah. And you talked about that gaping wound yes. and that is part of the workshop is is going through the valley of grief yeah. uh diane baskovich put this whole program together on grief and um processing through that and that's a big part of the recovery is counting the cost of it and experience and just mourning mourning the loss the mourning the the loss of the vision of the dreams that you had for your marriage for your family and and grieving that and if you can go into the depths of that valley and not cut across with a bridge (laughs) um, by jumping into a relationship Mm. then you are in a much better place uh, to make healthier choices when you get to the other side you know we're coming up on the end of our time i can't believe it goes so fast but let me ask you this question. A lot of people say you got to have two years of singleness after mm-hmm. a divorce before you get into another relationship. What do you have to say to that? I th- I say a minimum of two years. I mean, it's not it's not a quick process. And if uh, Carl Kickerpill, who um, had the vision for this and is the founder of the divorce recovery, he says um, crazy attracts crazy. <laughs> so if you if you don't stop to get the healing, mm. you know, that degree, that amount of healing that you get, that's how you're going to pick your next relationship. So that's, that's two years if you're working it, if you're right. if you're engaging a healing process and a right. restoration. If you've just been sort of coasting along or even going backwards, it might right. be more important to take even more than two years. Yes. But that's, it's, it's an important guideline to help us remember to slow down mm-hmm. and to, and to dig in. Do yeah. The work. Rec- recognizing the choice. Why did we make that choice mm-hmm. and what happened in the marriage and, and mm-hmm. kind of doing a postmortem yeah. so you can really understand what happened and then forgiveness. Is well, a huge part. There is so much more that we <laughs> need to talk about. And so I'm, I'm sure we'll do some more of these if I can twist your arm, Sheree. Uh, but I want to just say as we come to the end of our time, uh, remind you, Divorce Recovery Workshop, uh, the one here in, in Southern California that uh, we recommend is called Free to Love Again, DRW.org. So check that out. Uh, come to the one in November if you can make it, or in, if not in the spring, they'll be mm-hmm. offered twice a year, God willing, uh, going forward. Also, 
Uh, you mentioned some books. You mentioned Jim Smoke's book called uh, Growing Through Divorce. Yes. And you mentioned uh, Sacred Marriage by Gary Thomas to yes. kind of give us a, a good picture of a Christian marriage. and uh, Chip Ingram's mm-hmm. sex last and le- love and lasting relationships. Sex, love and lasting relationships, Chip Ingram. And that's mm-hmm. I-N-G-R-A-M, I believe. And so, yeah, check those out. And then this uh, program called Divorce Care that yes. churches will often mm-hmm. offer. Yes. And this is a program that is an actual walk that you walk over a period of weeks Mm -hmm. with a group of people. So while the Divorce Recovery Workshop is, in fact, a sort of a boot camp, uh, uh, high impact, front end kind of a thing, there's other ways to continue your recovery process in a a group setting, in a a faith-based setting. Also, there's Christian counseling Mm -hmm. and, and personal work available that way. You had said as we were on our way here that... There's a big difference between Christian counseling and oh, secular yes. counseling in this area of divorce recovery. Yes, yes. And so make sure that if you're a believer, you make sure that you're sharing these very powerful uh, parts of your life with someone who not only understands your process, but who also mm-hmm. understands your commitment to Jesus and how God works in yes. these situations, which, wow, if we have that, if we have that point of view, if we have that understanding, if we have that revelation mm-hmm. that God is present even in our darkest hour, Mm -hmm. to work in us for his greater glory. That is a perspective that the world does not understand and does not have. And boy, do we can, we can for a, for a second there feel very rich and very blessed that we, we know that there is a bigger story that we are a part of, even when our stories get hard and difficult. Sheree, it's been great to spend this time with you, you, and I'm looking forward to being together in November for the workshop. Uh, This has been another Graceless Audio presentation. I'm Bill Ferris. Thank you for listening. This has been a Graceless Audio presentation from Bill Ferris, MPC. For more brief and full-length audio messages from Bill, visit his page at Spreaker.com. And don't forget to share your comments with Bill by writing him at Bill Ferris at BillFerris.com. Thanks for listening.